Hello everyone. This is another episode of Coffee with Penny. We are, joined, <laughs> we are joined by Aurora and today we're going to be talking about different methods of cleansing. So there's the very typical way of smudging which is the basic traditional Native American way. Um, seashells or a bowl and sage. This is desert sage. This is a White desert sage. sage. Blue sage. Desert sage? Yeah, this is also desert sage. If you do burn anything in your seashell, it's good to put sand or salt within the shell so it doesn't crack. Um, otherwise, the heat will crack it, and you do have to be very careful with that. And also, the, if you use salt, you can make black salt mm -hmm. afterwards. Another way, which a lot of people don't think about, is with sound. Music, humming, singing, chanting, all of these can um, help cleanse the space. It's just another method. Um, I like to use bells, especially a brass bell, but pretty much anything you can think of that makes noise can work. Um, this is my tiny bell. Um, drumming. Drumming works mm -hmm. great. Gongs work great. Uh, wind chimes are a wonderful way to add music and sound into your home to help cleanse it. You can also just go to YouTube and search for like tones that cleanse things or anything like that yeah. and just play it on your phone and like just walk around and that works too. And just speaking, laughing, singing can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, another way is with an athame or a wand. This is one of my athames. It's made out of wood. And what does an athame do? It literally projects energy. So what you do is you focus your intent and you say a prayer or just focus your intent and make sure that you go throughout the house, cleansing it and making sure that you make a barrier with this so that only things that you allow and invite in are able to come in. Mm -hmm. The next thing you can do is you can place little bowls of salt around your house and like in the corners yeah, and things. In the corners. Mm -hmm. And you can add stones. Um, I have an amethyst, a little rose quartz for love, a smoky quartz to help collect negative energy, a citrine to help energize everything and keep everything um, charged. I have a tiger's eye for grounding, a moss agate for grounding, a clear quartz for energizing, and a little holy stone. And a holy stone is basically, I've done a couple of videos on this in, in the past, it's basically a naturally hold stone. And some people can find these and you can find these around. They are free and you can pretty much find them wherever. Um, they can be harder to find than other ones, but you just have to find them. Um, and to this, just add a little bit of salt. I like natural sea salt, but pretty much any other salt can do, Himalayan salt Straight or... Straight up table salt or also table works salt. if it you're works poor. It works totally fine. Um, and basically what you're doing is a very... Think of the concept of a crystal grid. You're essentially making that within the cup and then putting that around your house to make a different sort of grid. Um, and this will last for a very long time, especially if you have citrine or a carnelian. Mm -hmm. Did I call this a citrine or did I call this a carnelian? This is a carnelian. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> carnelian for energizing, for keeping everything charged. Um, citrine or carnelian will work. You could also use a sunstone. Um, Basically anything orange or yellow. Yes. You're kind of good. Once a month, put this all under the new or under the full moon or under the sun and let it recharge and then put it around your house and it works just like new. Um, the next thing mm -hmm. you could use is flint or obsidian. Anything that has a natural edge to it and is glass-like. Um, obsidian is a really, really powerful stone for cutting ties. And flint does the same thing, only it's a little bit more gentle. Um, what about black tourmaline? Black tourmaline, I don't use a lot because... It disappears. <laughs> yes. Just because disappears. it disappears. Also because there is a problem with ethical harvesting mm -hmm. of tourmaline, and we do have to be very mindful of where we're getting our stones. If you can find tourmaline that's here in the that's from here in the U.S. or from Canada or from any part of Europe, pretty much, it's okay. If you find out that it's like 
from South America or from the Middle East, it very well might be basically a blood mined stone where that money goes back to the Taliban or back to terrorist organizations or goes back to like really bad people that we don't want to support. And also we have to be very mindful of how things are harvested in order to preserve that energy and make sure that we are truly being earth stewards and helping the earth rather than just taking from it. How could that change your magic though? Um, if you have something that's that not is a whole well. topic within itself. So um, <laughs> let's discuss that another time. Video next to come. <laughs> yes, next video to come. Obsidian is a really good one. It's really common. Um, I use this a lot for cutting ties. And basically, you use it just like the athame. You go around the room, and you seal your house with it. Um, the next thing you can use is a mirror, and you can use natural sunlight, or you can use right, sorry, right the camera. Um, you can use natural sunlight, or you can use moonlight, and literally take it around and shine, reflect that into every corner of your house. Okay, we're gonna move to my part. Um, so I have more basic stuff that you can get a lot easier. Um, so basically in this little jar I have a tiny bit of moon water left, which you can just make by putting a cup or a jar on a windowsill where it can touch moonlight and you can charge it with stones, like um, basically anything. Moonstone's really good for it. And then you can kind of use that as power from the moon, just anytime you want. So you can put this in a little spray bottle and spray it around. And you can do the same with the sun, mm -hmm. or pretty much any, any... Any solar power. Solar, well, celestial body. Celestial, celestial body. body. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also have my itty bitty stone. She tries really hard. <laughs> She's cute. Yeah. You mean Belle? Not stone. This is a bell. <laughs> <laughs> can we start over? <laughs> You're good. You can edit, right? Um, I also have the sage where mine is wrapped really tight. So if you can find one that's not wrapped this tight, it's a lot easier to light because then it can actually breathe and will actually work without you standing there for 10 minutes. Um, the next thing I have is black walnut which is amazing for cutting ties with people. Um, really good for banishing. It's really good for cleansing things mm -hmm. and cleansing basically any and all psychic ties that you have to it. Um, Breaking ties from like the people mm -hmm. who used to live here. So if you know for a fact that they're not great people or you just don't want to have like their energy lingering around in your house, this is a really good one. How can you use this? You can sprinkle it on like window sills, above door sills. You can also... You can use it in a sweep, mm -hmm. which is why I have my broom here. You can add it to salt. You can just grind it up and sprinkle it around your house and literally sweep it up and sweep it out the door. You can make kind of a tea out of it with water. Don't drink it. You just put it in a um, spray bottle and then you can use it the same thing as with moon water. So what about your... Your broom. My broom? Yes. So the broom is mostly used for sweeping. This one is a ceremonial broom, so I don't actually sweep with this, but you could um, use a ceremonial broom. Um, usually I have a separate altar broom that I cleanse my altar with, but you could also just buy a regular broom and use some salt and sweep it out, and that's all it takes. Um, you could actually just physically go through the house just doing the motion of sweeping and sweep all of that out. Um, it really doesn't take much. Um, I also just have plain old incense sticks over here and you can use that kind of like saging your house, but it's a little gentler. And depending on what is in it, you can kind of put a feeling or sort of like a blessing, if you know what I mean. Prayer. Sort of like a prayer or blessing into your house. Um, so if you were to use like lavender, it'd be calming, healing, that kind of thing. Whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Use whatever resonates with you and really makes you happy. Yes. Um, and then the last thing I have, which I usually always put um, on my altars, is I make kind of a little bowl or whatever of ingredients and everything. And I'm kind of guided by deities that I talk to. And it protects my altar, it protects what I'm going to do, it blesses what I'm going to do in the future. Um, and also as someone who does worship deities, it's a good way to call 
gods to your new altar and your new space so that they know how to find you and how to be a part of your magic. And one thing that we don't have here, which I wish we did, is uh, floor washes. Mm -hmm. So you can do Florida water or you can do pretty much any kind of floor wash that you want. Make an infusion of herbs, add a crystal or so, add some salt, and you can wash your floor and literally wash the energy out of your house. You can also do this for the walls, you can do this for pretty much anything. Mirrors are great, um, and that's a really, really good way to cleanse your house as well. Another super cheap way that you can do stuff that you've talked to me about before is that you can literally just grab a kitchen knife and you can use that to cut away any previous ties. And you can do that with houses, with people, with basically anything, which is super cheap. <laughs> Very cheap and easy to do. Mm -hmm. Literally, these are things that anyone can do. You don't need, you know, you don't necessarily need these specific rocks. You don't need, necessarily need these specific herbs, but Use what is in your house, what you already use, what you have available. Witchcraft shouldn't be this very elitist thing expensive. that is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be available. And the beautiful thing about so many magical practices is that it came from these grassroots mm -hmm. people. If we look at hoodoo and with the slave trade and everything that came together to make hoodoo, those practices are amazing because it is literally just household items that you can use every single day. And that I think is a beautiful thing that we should learn from and be very happy to have because it doesn't have to be this expensive, again, elitist kind mm -hmm. of thing. It can literally come simply from your home and simply from your own energy. So many ways that really, I mean, the sky's the limit. Anything you can think of can really be used in magic. Yeah, if and you find grass outside, mm -hmm. you can use that to yeah. sleep as well. So. Yeah, and it's literally that simple. Mm -hmm. um, our ancestors, you know, they lived off of the land and they had to learn how to do these things without any of our expensive tools. So really, really important mm -hmm. and really valuable to learn from them and learn from their example. For sure. Honestly, I like to vary up my methods of cleansing. I mm -hmm. like to do, you know, one week I'll do a smudge, one week I'll do a floor wash, one week I'll do, you know, something else. And I love varying that because it just layers mm -hmm. and it keeps the energy going and the momentum of the house going. And it keeps you from getting bored. Yes. Instead yes. of walking around your room every week in the same direction, waving sage, saging your door, mm -hmm. you actually get to do fun, interesting mm. things instead of yeah. just going through the motions. Because I feel like I've done that before, and when I go through the motions, I put no intention behind it. I'm like, waving it, we're good. And it doesn't work at all, right. obviously. Yeah. And you could also just dance. Dance in your home. Too. Have happiness in your home. Your home should be a joyous place that you love to come. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then we have to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's another video to come to. <laughs> That's another video. <laughs> um, yeah, have joy, um, be joyous in your home, feel safe in your home. And that's kind of one of the things that we really need to bring back to a lot of ceremonial witchcraft. I yeah. think a lot of people get caught up in like trying to make it perfect and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just have it be sincere. Mm -hmm. That's the most beautiful thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. I don't think I have anything else to add. <laughs> so if you, would like to like, share, and um, comment below. That'd be great. We also How do you cleanse your house? Yeah, we would love to hear yeah. it. We would love to hear your techniques. If you have any new ones, hit us up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'd love to hear it. We also have a free educational group on Facebook. Feel free to join us. All of those links are going to be below in the description box. We also have a Patreon, which, you know, <laughs> I mean, we haven't done much with yet. We're still kind of figuring it out. But we would love to engage with you guys more and have classes and have, you know, one-on-one -on -one tarot sessions. Mm -hmm. We would love to have that. So if you feel like supporting us and you are able to support us, please do that. And that's going to be in the links below. We also have an Etsy page. We also have an Instagram account. So we're very connected. Yes. <laughs> yes. And all of those things are going to be mm -hmm. below. Feel free to check us out. We always have something going on. And that's the thing. We're here to talk to you. So if you have a comment, if you have a question, please just let us know. Yeah. And 
think that's all. So thank you so thank much you. for watching. Have a good day.